we are going to compare grain-fed versus grass-fed Wagyu beef. And we know grass-fed is better for the environment, it's better living conditions for the animal, and the end resulting product is far more nutritious, yielding multiple times the amount of vitamins and far better omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acid ratios. But does the taste of grass-fed Wagyu beef stand up to traditional grain-fed Wagyu beef? Let's take a look. There is a stunning visual difference between these two steaks in both the protein and fat. So here we see obviously the grass-fed steak on the left and has a nice deep red color, the beige yellowish, very soft uh, grass-fed fat. That's from the carotenoids in the grass. You can really smell the pasture, the nuttiness. You know, you can smell that this steak is grass-fed and just visually looking at it, it's from a healthier animal. When we take a look at the Wagyu, obviously a much higher level of marbling. Both of these steaks are graded A5+, but there is a slightly higher amount of fat in the pattern on the Japanese grain-fed steak, which creates a more, I would say, crazy visual appearance. You know, there's a ton of fat on this steak, far more fat than protein here. And as we see, you know, the steak is, it's kind of floppy. Uh, the fat is white. Uh, it honestly doesn't look too appetizing in color compared to the grass-fed steak. And a, a distinctly different smell. I would say this smells almost like grain-fed beef, but there is definitely a deep nuttiness uh, to this steak as well. So definitely a higher quality than any sort of grain-fed steak we're getting in America. But it's very obvious that these cattle are getting uh, some grain and also some pretty high quality feed. Now, I have never spent as much money as I have on a steak before this, guys. This Japanese Wagyu ribeye was over $130 uh, for about a 12-ounce steak. Uh, at Frankie's Free Range Meat, uh, we sell this grass-fed Wagyu for about $44, and you get a nice, beautiful fat cap with it. I just trimmed it off for the purpose of the video. So you can literally buy, you know, three of these steaks that are bigger, so you'll get three 16-ounce grass-fed Wagyu steaks versus one 12-ounce Japanese Wagyu steak uh, at most competitors. But let's see if this warrants paying more than three times the price. Let's go put these on the grill and find out. First, I'm going to season these just with a little bit of salt to bring out the complexity and nuances of each of these types of beef. Here I have a wood fire that I created in my gas grill using cherry wood. I'm not too confident in getting a sear on a super thin steak like this without a really hot wood fire. And I also have an instant read thermometer that I'm going to use to ensure that the internal temperature on both of these steaks is consistent. We're gonna start with the grass-fed steak first, mainly because I want this as hot as possible uh, before I put the Wagyu on. One of the nice things about cooking Wagyu beef or really any fatty steak is that the flames flare up so nicely and you get this really beautiful deep brown crust very quickly on the steak. For a medium rare steak, we want to take it off the grill when the internal temperature is approximately 120 degrees, between 120 and 122. That way, when you take the steak off the grill, it will go up to about 125, 126 degrees, which would be medium rare. Red in the center, pink to the edges. But since I have such a hot wood fire here, 
I already have this deep, beautiful brown crust in about one minute. And when we take the internal temperature of the steak, it's still cold. You know, the internal temperature of the steak is below 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do here is either, you know, finish this steak off to the side or put it in the oven. And I'm going to put this in the oven because, you know, the, the heat distribution on this grill isn't even enough to cook this internally. The grass-fed Wagyu steak is beautifully crusted. I'm going to throw this in the oven at 400 degrees to finish cooking. Now we have the Japanese Wagyu. The steak is much fattier, so we're going to have to be more careful with the flames flaring up. And the steak is also a lot thinner, so it warmed up quicker when it came out of the fridge and it's going to cook through faster. So be a little careful with a super fatty steak like this. So I'm turning this really frequently because I don't want the steak to heat up too quickly in the middle. If I keep flipping this like this, I should be able to dry out the crust and get some browning. This also reduces the cooking of the internal part of the steak because you're not giving the heat too much time to penetrate through. So the Japanese steak cooked incredibly quickly on the grill, about a minute total. We took the internal temperature to 120 degrees. And as I said, the sheer difficulty of cooking a thin steak like this, getting a brown crust, without you know burning it and even trying to do this on a regular stove top in like a cast iron pan almost impossible so not really user friendly especially considering i spent 130 dollars on this steak so we have the grass-fed wagyu in the oven it's been at least six or seven minutes let's take the internal temp up to 112 degrees, so we're getting there, almost there. I'm gonna flip this steak over, double check the internal temp. Yeah, still low, low hundred teens. I'm gonna take out our little nub of fat here, and we'll put this in probably about two more minutes. Yeah, 123, so this should be perfect. Wagyu steaks already rested a few minutes, and considering the size of the steak, uh, that, that one's probably ready to eat. This is something I cannot illustrate enough. The margin of error when cooking a thicker steak is so important. So if you guys are going to you know, spend a lot of money on Japanese Wagyu, I would have probably spent, you know, 150, 160 just to get a slightly larger steak uh, so that I wouldn't have had to do this. And, you know, obviously this steak didn't turn out how I would have liked it to, but this is with pretty much the highest level of technique that you could really do, practically speaking. You might try to argue that you could dry this steak out on the surface a bit, but it's so thin that if you did that, uh, you might compromise it even more when you go to cook it. Internal temperature did hit 130 Fahrenheit. Uh, so this will probably actually be medium in the center. I think I might have went a little under on the waggy steak. I was just so afraid of overcooking it. I'm trying to cut against the grain here. It's so fatty. It's hard to even gauge what the temperature is. I mean, this seems like a perfect medium. Maybe a little rare from what I could tell. It's tough. You know, the color of the Wagyu meat was so weird. But, but just by feeling it and looking how juicy this is, I think this is on the rare side. So this probably could have gone a little bit longer on the grill. Yeah, 
Ooh, that's nice. That's what most people would consider a perfect medium rare. You know, there's no real color gradient. You know, there's no gray edge. It's literally just slightly red in the center and pink throughout the rest of the steak. Can't really get a more perfect color gradient than this. You sous vide warriors in the comment section can go take a hike. This is how you actually cook a steak. Wood fire, finish in the oven or on the fire. Gets just as perfect as wrapping your steak in plastic for 12 hours and blowing on it. I have never actually tried Japanese Wagyu, so I'm looking forward to this. And listen, after spending $130 plus on this steak, I want it to be good. I really do. I don't want to be disappointed, but it's tough expectations. You know, I've never spent that much money on a steak in a restaurant, let alone on one that I had to cook myself. So I'm gonna try the grass fed first, and then I'm gonna try the Wagyu, and then we'll go back and forth a couple times. So that beautiful, deep red grass fed beef, perfect medium rare. Super flavorful, really rich. Now for the Wagyu. Very different flavor. I can't really describe it. It's not like, it's not like some grass fed note. It's, it's definitely a grain fed flavor. Not as horrible as American grain fed beef. It's almost kind of enjoyable, uh, but let's try another piece of the grass fed. Uh, so this has a little more fat in it. Definitely a higher protein content in the grass fed steak. So these are getting pretty hard to compare from both a flavor and a textural standpoint. I'm gonna try another piece of the Wagyu beef. I'm gonna try the grass fed one more time then I'll Give you guys my opinion. I'm just gonna have a little bit of that fat that was on the end of the grass fed steak too. Now that is crazy. That is what I'm talking about. I don't really understand Wagyu. This is so fatty, it's almost like eating fat. It's obviously more tender than this because of the high fat content, but it's very rich and very greasy. It's not something I would sit down and eat as a steak. If you like this, if this is like amazing to you, Japanese Wagyu, you haven't had good grass fed beef fat. The moment of truth. My unobjective assessment of this is a tie. And there's many reasons for this. The flavor of the grass-fed is superior. And if you take a piece of this grass-fed fat and consume it with the grass-fed muscle meat that has that high level of marbling, you get an incredibly delicious combination of flavor, texture, nuttiness, the char on the grill. And most of our steaks on Frankie's Free Range Meat are more marbled than this, especially the New York strip. Uh, so I'm sure the experience would be even better. The Wagyu steak ties it. Because the fat content is so much higher, it's more tender. What I don't like about the Wagyu and what I really can't get past is the flavor is, it's, it's so different and unique and not necessarily in a good way that the sear doesn't actually complement the steak. When I bite into this Wagyu steak, I taste the sear, and then it transforms into this Wagyu flavor that's even more powerful. So I don't know if I would have had a different opinion of this if I had, you know, cooked uh, the meat in a pan, but I definitely couldn't have gotten a sear in the pan. Uh, so tenderness goes to the Wagyu. It's super rich, it's like really greasy, and I love that type of stuff. It's like eating fat. What I would do personally is have the grass-fed Wagyu 
few times a month, once or twice a week. Really enjoyable, really approachable, nice, easy to cook, flares up on the grill, gets a super quick crust. Japanese Wagyu, very expensive, definitely out of my budget. Super special occasion type of thing, birthday, anniversary. And I honestly don't think it's worth the price point. It, definitely not. I think you guys should try both of these in some capacity. I would not buy this steak and try to prepare it at home. I don't even think I did that great of a job of preparing it. I think this is something you definitely want to get in a restaurant, but you know that's going to jack up the price even more. But above all of this Wagyu stuff, guys, what you really need to experience if you haven't is a high quality piece of grass fed beef fat. I could go back and forth on this grass fed Wagyu and this Japanese Wagyu all day because it really is that close for me. But the best bite that I put in my mouth today was this nugget of grass fed beef fat that was on the end and it's not even close. Thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and above all else, please share the video. It really helps me out. You can check out Frankie's Free Range Meat. We have this high quality grass fed Wagyu at an incredibly affordable price, Frankie's Free Range Meat.com. Uh, we also recently added an organ meat grind, and we have a super high quality grass fed beef fat. Uh, if you guys would like to try that out as well. Thanks again for joining me today, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.